So the lotto is soon to be upon us over here on the NA side of things. And I know a lot of players are wondering how am I going to take down some of these high efficiency nodes because these guys are rocking anywhere from 800,000 HP to 1 million HP at the very end. And the middle nodes are rocking anywhere from like 200 to 250 K HP as well. But do not worry. I have gone ahead, checked out all the characters that are going to be on these different nodes, looked at all their power mods. So that way I can give you guys some notable characters that you want to be looking out for to bring to some of these high-end nodes because if you didn't know these more difficult nodes are going to be giving you the best drops they're going to give you the best bond they're going to give you every single lotto currency every single shop currency well i guess there's only one lotto currency but you get what i'm saying you're going to be getting the best of all these worlds and just a little known secret over here but the final actual lotto node has some pretty good drops and bells if you're going to be going for the anniversary servant next year and summer mellow scene you're going to be needing a lot of these bells because they need like 228 a pop, I think, to do both of them. And that's them individually. I mean, you want to start getting both of them fully skilled up and everything. You're going to need a lot of those. So being able to farm those while also just going for the lotto currency is a nice bonus. Same thing for uh, the first one that we're going to be getting. You actually get scales of fantasies from that one. I know a lot of the Lost Gold 6 servants need those. So yeah, these are some pretty good lotto notes to be farming in general from the drops to the actual lotto themselves. You want to get on the ground for on this one and make sure that you're hitting the ground running. So starting off with what I'm going to be calling phase one, this is the super Orion node. Now it's going to start you off with a wave of all earth enemies, which is really nice. And the second wave is also a earth attribute archer. So if you are somebody that happened to have gotten summer Ibuki, she is really good for this. And for a lot of players, if you just don't have the ability to brute force through these with buster farming, you're going to need to use some multi-core setups. Now I did outline that in a video a couple of months ago. You can go look at that on the channel. I'm sure there's like a search function when you look at the videos, just type in multi-core and you'll be able to find it. I break it down, but it's essentially using two different loopers, having a single target generally and an AOE. And Summer Ibuki is really good for stuff like this because she's rather self-sufficient and should be able to mop up both of these two nodes. But also, if you're going to be doing buster farming, Areshkigal works really well as well because she is also anti-Earth with her most recent buff that we got over here on the NA side of things. So if you're buster farming, she's an absolute dreamboat going through all of these because not only is that really good for the first two waves, but also the final big enemy, Super Orion, is also Earth attribute. And so is Arash, who's going to be accompanying him. And he's kind of beefy on the final node, being about 242,000 HP. So if if you're buster farming, a Reshkigal is going to be key here. She has the power mod, she has the 50% battery, so she's really easy to use. You can refund her skills so you can get that big buster buff back. She's just going to be really good in general. But this also does work if you don't have Kalyanskaya and you want to do multi-core. Say you want to have a really strong, beefy Ereshkigal. I know she's really popular. Maybe you did NP5 her and you want to bring her to go take out that large Super Ryan at the back. It's still really nice to have somebody like Summer Ibuki take out the first two waves. That way you don't have to really worry about like, you know, Kalyanskaya refunding batteries and everything, right? But Earth is going to be very key for this first one. There's also Divinity that's not too bad because Super Orion does have the Divinity trait. So if you're going to be relying on an AoE to take out waves one and two and then maybe have a single target mop up wave three maybe you do refund your aoe's np back and they're supposed to take out the smaller arash or you're just going to be banking on crits with your face cards that's also a viable strategy for players don't let anybody tell you that if your box is going to be reliant on doing that don't let people tell you that you can't you just get through these allottos as painlessly as possible ideally you want to consistently three turn but hey if you can only do four turns and you got to bring someone like say skahawk to take out that super orion and then crit down the arash that is perfectly fine Someone else to be taking a look at though is Vitra because Vitra does give the entire party anti-divinity. So if you do want to use, say, your single target on waves two and three, she can give them that extra little kick while also being able to handle wave one because the enemies aren't too big and Vitra should be able to mop them up quick, fast, and in a hurry. Vitra also does refund NP every single turn. So if you do use her for wave one, she will start refunding her battery over the course of the end of wave one and the end of wave two. So she does get a little bit a refund so even if she doesn't fully refund uh you know doing the first wave she will be regenerating her NP for the final note as well. So those are some very solid options. There is also Penthesilia. If you happen to be one of those guys that has really invested in her, she's not half bad. She does have the 100% power mod against Greek mythological males, which Super Orion obviously falls under that. And she does give herself 20% per turn. 
So essentially, if you start her battery on the first wave, you'll have a solid chunk of NP by the time you actually need it when going up against Super Orion. So I do think she's also a viable option if you have a particularly beefy Penthesilia. But even then, going after 843k on a Super Orion is still going to be very tough. So I really only throw that out there for the people with the beefiest of Penthesilias. But I know the Tomboy and Julia's are out there. But the first one I don't think is all that hard. Again, with everybody being Earth Attribute, if you do have some of these uh, particularly strong Earth Attribute, you know, killers essentially in the game with summary buki or rush goal you should be fine the second one is i think going to be where a lot of people get tripped up specifically because of charlemagne at the end but let us talk about how the wave is broken down the wave is broken down into a 2-1-3 note again very very strong if you have the koyan skaya setup because you can just brute force your way through this but if you do not you're going to be relying on doing multi-core setups wave one does feature two sabers that are both earth attributes so again summer ibuki is really good for stuff like this because because she will get in that threshold I found of looping about 50% of her NP back so she can fire it again if you need it on waves two or three for that extra bit of damage, which could be very good for wave two because you're gonna be fighting Roland who is a 245,000 HP enemy that is earth, male, lawful, and good. I point all of these out because again, again, someone like Summer Ibuki can be really good at mopping up wave one, popping her battery, then mopping up wave two, or you could also take advantage of some free-to-play options in your multi-core setups by using somebody like Uriel, who's anti-male. Tomatomo or Summer Say are also good against lawful enemies, and Tomatomo does do a little bit of building up. Not too much, because you're not really letting him get to the full buildup of, like, you know, his final skill of getting all that NP damage, but he still does hit lawful guys. And Etchon, I think, is really good. MHX Alter, because not only is Roland good alignment, he's a saber, so she gets both of her power mods, and the same can be said against Charlemagne. Charlemagne, even though he is a star-attributed enemy, and star has no counter on NA, the only person we have that does counter uh, the star attribute is the new BB Dubai over on JP, but we do still have Etchon, who can absolutely tear good sabers a new one. So if you do have Etchon, even though she doesn't have a battery, if you can find a way to work her into your team comms, she will be an absolute godsend going into this. She's going to be a little bit kind of weirder to use, and you're probably going to want to save her to take out that Charlemagne itself but do not counter out. The only weird thing is that the final note does also have Brad in there or Bradamante for the uninitiated. It's a little bit weird because again, she is a Lancer. So somebody like Tama Tomo can't go and fight her even though she is lawful, but you could just still use somebody like Summer Say who is a Berserker so you could use her anywhere. Again, she's quick, doesn't have the craziest refund. So it's gonna be a little awkward trying to work her in there, but I do think you could try to work her into some of your team setups to try to take advantage of that lawful alignment. Again, she's also Earth, so Summer Ibu fans the people that pull for her are going to be absolutely eating as she's not only really good on phase one but also really good here on phase two but again summer ibuki is going to need a little bit of backup to take out that charlemagne because she doesn't really have anything to hit him with it's just going to be her natural berserker modifier going into him because he's not an earth attribute and you know star really has like no counterplay so i would recommend if you do have an mhx alter please take advantage of her for that i can understand a lot of people skipping out on this one because it is a little bit more awkward being a 2-1-3, whereas phase one which is a 3-1-2, and that third enemy is going to be very crucial for a lot of players who need that extra refund because hitting more enemies gives you more refund on your quick and art servants, so having that third might make it a lot easier, especially because of the drops for phase one and two really aren't all that different, if different at all whatsoever. So I can understand some people just hitting phase one really hard, maybe peeling back a little bit on phase two because, again, the drops are also not that great. You're getting horseshoes and lunagos, which aren't the best, and then saving the remaining stamina going into the third phase over here which i do think is the easiest because it's a 331 node meaning it is the easiest to multi-core and gives you the best drops possible it drops more of the currency than the last two so if you have limited apples this is the one to save up for or if you just can't do the other ones comfortably this is the one to go hit because you can very easily get a looper to go through waves one and two normally as if you were going through a normal free quest. And then you can use them plus a single target that you've been saving in the back to take out the very large Kentoki who does have a lot of counterplay. But talking about the guys in the first two nodes, 
Wave 1 has a 130k man enemy and two 36k earth enemies. Not the craziest thing because those 36k earth guys are pretty much going to die to anything, so don't worry too much about them. It's really the man guy you want to focus on, and we'll kind of get to man being really good in this one in particular. Because moving over to the second wave, you have a 150k earth attribute enemy, a 54k sky attribute enemy, and a 235k man attribute enemy that's Tomatomo. And you'll see if you kind of have those gears turned in your head, you know where I'm going with this because Kentoki is also man attribute. Morgan absolutely destroys her own lotto quest. If you have Morgan, she will absolutely rip and tear through this stage. Also, if you have Koyanskaya and you do not have Morgan, remember that Koyanskaya gives you the man power mod. It's not as big as some of the other guys, right? It's not a whole 150k power mod, but it is still an additional bonus damage that you will have on all of the largest enemies, that 130k guy, the 235k, and the big one mil Kentoki. She is giving it to all of those guys, which is super huge. But again, because it is also a 331 node, this does open you to some arts and quick options. I mean, Ryukyu just came out, who also does have the man power mod. She can also be really good at getting through this. And because again, it's 331, you don't suffer the bad problem that Quick has going into these like two or one enemy nodes where they just cannot refund their NP. So if you did pull for Ryukyu, she's also really strong for this node. Speaking of Quick servants that are really strong for this, if you go the multi-core setup of using some AOE to mop up waves one and two. If you have Tyra, you know, big Ushi, Kentoki is a Genji, and so she will have a 200% Genji power mod against this guy. And if for some reason your Tyra doesn't kill, because I don't know, maybe you haven't invested too much into her, maybe she's NP1, the crits that she's able to do as follow up are absolutely insane. So she is great for destroying that Kentoki. But then again, there's also people like Skahawk that can really put in some work against Kentoki because she has anti divinity. Remember, Vitra, very good for this one because she can loop waves one and two while also giving the entire party that anti-divinity power mod to boost you up against Kentoki even more. Ruler Martha is even pretty decent because she does have the anti-divine thing, albeit only for one turn, but you do just only need her to chunk the giant Kentoki, and so she can be fairly decent for that if you have her decently built up. Taigong is also really strong for this as well. Unfortunately, not super good going into the other guys here, but he does have a very very large power mod against divine enemies because he not only gets the 150% on his own NP, but if you look at his second skill, he gives himself a 50% divinity like power mod as well. So really he has 200% same thing as Tyra. He's just not a single target. He's an AOE, but also keep in mind, he's giving the entire party 15% quick attack and NP damage while also giving everybody 20% battery. So if you do have Taigong, do not sleep on him. He's not only going to be really good at doing damage to Kentoki, but also buffing up the entire party and giving you those nice little buffs. There is funny enough, something I would like to experiment with when this actually does drop. And that's the fact that maybe a Taigong and Koyan Light for like a really weird box might work out because Koyan Light gives you the manpower mod stuff. Taigong does the anti-divinity stuff. He refunds on his NP because he's a quick servant and he does have a little bit of counterplay with, you know, Koyan Skaya because his skill two and skill three are both six turns. I'm not saying it's going to be the craziest thing, but if you need a really like haphazardly thrown together setup, I do think you could maybe get something going with that. I don't think it'll be particularly good, but hey, if that's what you're going to be doing, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, I basically literally wrote all this stuff down in like this notepad that I've been reading the entire time. It looks like the ravings of a madman, but I wanted to make sure I threw out all the things that I thought were really strong, not just going through like, oh, well, technically, you know, Lancer Alter has power mod again. It's like, yeah, but she doesn't have a battery. Like she's not going to be that great going into these. I tried to pick some of the better options, people that were super effective against the classes and also had good power mods against some of these individuals. Obviously, if you don't have anybody that I listed try to make do with best of what you've got I will also try to put up as many different like builds that I can for some of these different runs like that I think are kind of consistent I'll try to do my best to not use Oberon and the ones that I can afford not to because I know not everybody has Oberon you know even though that he did get that extra rate up what like earlier this year he got like that surprise one in like May or something not everybody's gonna have pulled Oberon so 
I'll do my best to provide what I can for everybody, but yeah, let me know what you're going to be doing in the comment section down below for the lotto. I'll have a full proper guide for the entire event coming out in the coming days, but I wanted to go ahead and throw this out early so you could level up some of the servants that were mentioned in here, especially again, someone like Uriel can be very strong going into like the Roland fight. Free to play that as a battery, free NP5, anti-man. I mean, that's just really, really strong for being able to take that guy out if you don't have anybody better. But with all that being said, I think I've rambled for long enough. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day and I'll catch y'all on the flippity floppity.